The European EV market is seeing massive growth as electric vehicle production ramps up to displace the internal combustion engine. While Tesla is the dominant EV maker in the world, with the Model 3 and the Model Y being the most popular electric vehicles around, Volkswagen still has an edge in Europe, its home market. CNBC made sure to highlight this in their latest report, stating why Volkswagen is beating Tesla in Europe. However, Volkswagen is the incumbent player, the 800-pound gorilla, the number two automaker in the world by sales, selling approximately 10 million units annually. Tesla sold just 500,000 vehicles last year, and this year will likely approach 900,000, but is still just a fraction of VW's overall sales. Volkswagen needs millions in sales just to maintain its current market position. But the real story is that electric vehicles are taking over, and if 100% of new car sales will be EVs in a decade from now, then ramping up EV production is the only thing that matters in terms of where companies will stand in 10 years. For instance, if Volkswagen aims to sell 5 million electric cars by 2030, then what happens to the other 5 million units that they typically sell each year? There's a lot of uncertainty if these units will be eaten up by other competitors or if they'll be replaced by hybrid vehicles or even stay as gas cars despite the huge amount of regulation coming down to protect the environment and phase out ICE vehicles. Therefore, if just a few million EVs is the goal by 2030, then that might make up the majority of the company's sales at that time, which means they are forecasting for a major downsizing. Tesla is currently the leader in the United States with an astounding 66% market share or two-thirds of the battery electric vehicle market. VW has a 9% market share in the US. In China, Tesla has captured 22% market share in the most recent quarter, while Volkswagen sits around 10%. Tesla also owns its factory in China, whereas VW has a joint venture with China's state-owned FAW. And in Europe, it's estimated that Tesla has held a 7% market share so far this year, while VW Group, including all its brands, is closer to 26%. Volkswagen has been focusing its sales into the European market, selling about 75% of all the EVs it produces into Europe, at least in the first half of the year. Nonetheless, while it appears that Tesla is being beaten by Volkswagen in Europe, there are underlying trends showing that Tesla may have already turned the tables around, and on top of that, Tesla is about to kick it into full throttle starting next year. This may be the last year that VW can say that it has the lead in its headquartered continent, but next year, things are about to change. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. The Volkswagen Group is one of the world's most dominant automakers with a mixture of multiple different brands, including Volkswagen itself, but also Audi, Porsche, Bentley, Skoda, Lamborghini, Seat, Cupra, and others. However, in 2015, VW was caught cheating in emissions tests such that when the vehicles were operating normally, they emitted 10 to 40 times the legal amount of pollutants. As part of their punishment, they were forced to begin investing early into electric vehicle infrastructure, sinking billions into charging stations such as Electrify America, which ended up helping them get ahead of other OEMs save Tesla. Herbert Diess took over as CEO in 2018 with a gargantuan task of helping to accelerate the push into electrification. It was also reported that back in 2015, Elon Musk tried to hire Diess to take his role as CEO of Tesla, but this obviously never panned out. Today, almost all of the Volkswagen Group's brands have an electric vehicle offering, but the company believes it is still far behind Tesla, having sold 290,000 EVs globally in the first three quarters of 2021, compared to Tesla, which sold more than double at 627,000. But they are planning to invest 89 billion euros into EVs over the next five years in order to try to catch up. Their current target is 3 million EVs by 2025. However, the company will need to produce 10 million EVs in order to just maintain its current sales in a world that's fully electric. According to Clean Technica, Volkswagen led in sales in 10 European countries from January to September. However, in the third quarter of this year, Tesla pulled ahead. 
In Norway, which is a small but established market where most of the vehicles being sold are already electric, Tesla surpassed all its competitors in this hockey stick shaped graph showing a spike in sales near the end of the year. This could be a reflection of what Tesla could do in other European countries. Tesla's low volume Model S and X are produced only in the US and shipped worldwide, whereas the high volume vehicles Model 3 and Model Y are currently shipped to Europe solely from Tesla's China factory. Typically, Tesla's China factory ships to other countries in the first half of each quarter, while sales are directed to local markets in the second half. Therefore, Tesla is still able to lead in China even while many shipments leave the country, allowing them to also maintain a large market share in Europe despite not having an operational factory on the continent. This means that Tesla's vehicles cost more relative to the home game competition due to shipping costs and tariffs on imported goods. Now that said, it appears that wherever Tesla does have a gigafactory, they dominate these respective markets, as we see in the United States and in China. And this is exactly what has Volkswagen worried and calls their leadership position into question. Tesla is about to open its new Giga Berlin factory in Germany. While it could still take 12 to 18 months to ramp up production, Tesla instantly becomes more competitive thanks to reduced shipping costs and import tariffs. This move will also help Tesla's market in China since they will quickly phase out shipments to Europe and have the Berlin factory be the main supply for the continent, allowing the China factory to focus on the local market. Since Giga Berlin is starting with Model Y, Model 3 will still be shipped from China to Europe. But this isn't the only thing causing the European automakers to freak out, to say the least. Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diess has his hands full trying to rally his executive team. He's held multiple crisis meetings with hundreds of executives to try and figure out and get them on board with catching up to Tesla. VW's Zwickau factory in Germany made its last combustion engine vehicle in June of 2020, it now produces fully electric cars only. However, Diess has noted that Tesla is able to produce an electric vehicle three times faster than Volkswagen. In October, Herbert Diess invited Elon Musk to speak at an internal conference with VW executives. Diess has a massive task ahead. Although the company's EV sales appear to be doing well, he still needs to balance the highly profitable fossil fuel-based portion of the business, which is in massive decline especially as Volkswagen is cannibalizing themselves. In October 2021, Volkswagen saw an astounding 42% decline in its overall sales across Europe. While this is partially related to supply chain shortages, the shift to EVs has begun to seriously change consumer sentiment and make gas cars much less appealing. Dies also needs to manage at least 100 different factories around the world producing ICE vehicles or components. He needs to manage his workers as well and the transition to a world of EVs. Tesla only has four or five major gigafactories worldwide, which makes them extremely nimble if anything should change, but right now Tesla is the one setting the trends. In CNBC's recent report titled How Volkswagen is Beating Tesla, they counterintuitively state that Volkswagen is gunning for Tesla in Europe. This is strange because Europe is the only market where VW is leading, yet it appears that they're also trying to catch up to Tesla. Currently, VW's ID3 vehicle is already being produced in Europe and China, but not in the United States. The ID4 is expected to be produced in the US at the beginning of 2022. But the company expects to have 50 different car models by 2030 across its various brands. This is reminiscent of the iPhone taking over, where having multiple different types of phones, as Apple's competitors tried to flood the market with, didn't actually help and made it more confusing for consumers. It's also difficult for the company to manage different types of form factors, especially as the autonomous wave is coinciding with electric and calibrating different types of vehicle models simply adds to the overhead. Tesla currently sells just four models, S, 3X, and Y, making it much easier to manage one vehicle type in each category. They may increase this by 2023 to include the Cybertruck, Semi, and Roadster, with the Semi being tailored to the commercial vehicle market, but Tesla is trying to keep the number of types to a minimum and make the best possible vehicle for each class. More vehicles means more advertising dollars need to be spent in order to gain recognition, something that Tesla continues to be able to get for free, 
Even CNBC backs this point up by saying that it's not necessarily that someone will not consider an electric vehicle that's not from Tesla. It's in some cases they don't even know it's there. Moreover, according to the CNBC video, it states that VW's goal is to have 26 million vehicles built by 2029. This is an excellent goal, however, may be slightly misleading. This is the total cumulative amount of EVs in VW's history that they're targeting, not their annual production. VW is targeting for half its current production to be electric by 2030 and 100% electric by 2040, which is in about 20 years. But CNBC believes that VW has the edge in Europe for a number of reasons. The first is local manufacturing. This is true that VW produces vehicles locally, however, Tesla's Giga Berlin will quickly change the dynamics here. However, it's argued that VW has better brand familiarity in Europe. But it should be noted that VW pays huge sums in advertising dollars, whereas Tesla has spent none. They may have never met a competitor whose product and technology sells itself. They could have made this same argument in the US and China, where VW or even GM or Ford have had a better brand name for years, especially before Tesla existed, but that hasn't stopped Tesla from taking over the EV market. In the world of EVs, Tesla is well known globally and each vehicle they sell to a consumer causes word of mouth to be spread even further. Tesla has a viral effect as people show off what their cars can do to their friends and family. It's also argued that VW has cheaper price points in Europe. However, Tesla is doing quite well despite additional fees and taxes. Once Giga Berlin is producing cars, prices will decline and volumes will soar. However, consumers are already willing to pay up for a better vehicle with more range and more connected features to be part of Tesla's ecosystem. Tightening emission standards also appears to be an argument that CNBC uses which gives VW an edge over Tesla. This is actually a negative for VW since they will need to manage the phasing out of their ICE vehicle business, which is a very fragile transition especially given VW's massive size. This includes dealerships, suppliers, employees, pensions, and the potential decline in the value of ICE vehicles. While Volkswagen held the lead in 2021, in September, Tesla's Model 3 became Europe's best-selling car, of any car, not just EVs. It sold triple the number of Volkswagen's ID3, which is about five dollars to $10,000 cheaper, but people are willing to pay a little more to get Tesla's technology. The Model Y became the second best-selling battery electric vehicle, again, despite all of the Model Ys being imported from Tesla's China factory. Giga Berlin will be starting production with the Model Y which will lead to reduced consumer costs thanks to decreased transportation and import fees. In the United States, the SUV market is much larger than the sedan market by about four or five times the size. This has historically been inverted in the European market. However, in recent years, SUVs have been growing rapidly and almost make up about 50% of new vehicle registrations. This makes way for Tesla's Model Y to not only be a very popular offering, but could expand the SUV or crossover market itself in Europe. Given that Volkswagen has been focusing almost all of its efforts on Europe and Tesla has barely even started, once Giga Berlin rolls into action, it will trounce the competing brands. As mentioned, Tesla will continue to import Model 3 in from China, but shift its Model Y production to solely come from its local factory. Within 12 to 18 months, Giga Berlin could ramp up to 500,000 Model Ys per year which is over 40,000 per month, which could easily propel Tesla to the dominant position as the leader in Europe, even if Volkswagen continues to increase its own production. VW has sold about 220,000 EVs in the first three quarters in Europe. In a year and a half's time, Tesla could add 40,000 Model Ys to its 24,000 Model 3s per month, which could increase as well as China continues to ramp production, not to mention Model S and X, or anything else Tesla has planned for Europe that could show up in the future. Now CNBC notes that Tesla's vehicle prices are among the highest of its SUV competitors. However, first off, the Tesla Model X is not exactly a mass-produced vehicle. According to Elon Musk, it's the Fabergé egg of cars with its Falcon wing doors and reigns among the world's SUV supercars for its premium-priced plaid version. It's really competing against the high-end market 
not with the Chevy Bolt. Model Y is a better comparison. VW typically is able to sell cars en masse simply because they're affordable. However, the Model Y listed here isn't Tesla's base Model Y, while the other vehicles are listed with base model prices. The rear-wheel drive Model Y hasn't been produced yet, but will likely enter the roadmap as Tesla ramps up volume production and satisfies more of the demand for the high-end models. This will bring the base model down by about $10,000 US. With local production and removing import fees, Tesla could quickly get this vehicle into the mid $40,000 range, especially if they are able to also reduce their costs by sourcing parts locally over time. The Model Y is already highly competitive given its technology edge versus other models sold in Europe. And so at a low price point, Tesla will have very good control over its leverage in boosting demand as they are able to keep up with supply. When prices come down due to these dynamics, Tesla will have a real edge. The Berlin-made Model Y also packs a few additional features that Tesla's other Model Ys made in the US and China do not. Have a look at this video in the description below for a list of new features coming to the new 2022 Model Y. But the real reason that Tesla will outpace Volkswagen is that the supply side will prove to be an unfair advantage for Tesla as the company has been preparing for years to ramp up its battery production, which is one of the main constraints on vehicle production. It appears that Tesla has invested in ramping to a 50 gigawatt hour starting capacity at Giga Berlin. Elon Musk has said that Giga Berlin will be capable of then producing 100 gigawatt hours per year and possibly 200 to 250 gigawatt hours over time, making it the largest battery cell plant in the world. Tesla didn't specify how quickly it would be able to hit this level of battery production, but the company as a whole is targeting 100 gigawatt hours of its own production by the end of 2022, perhaps split between Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, and 3 terawatt hours by 2030. This is in addition to Tesla's battery suppliers. Volkswagen is expecting to have 6 40 gigawatt hour plants for a total of 240 gigawatt hours in Europe by 2030 in about 8 or 9 years time. While this number could expand, it appears that VW is shooting to have just a fraction of Tesla's battery capacity by 2030. Not to mention that CNBC even points out that Tesla's battery is $1300 cheaper than the ID3's battery. If Tesla isn't beating Volkswagen Europe already at their current pace, they will definitely have a dominant market share in 2022. Now Volkswagen views the future as connected vehicles, but today their ID4 for example has no over-the-air software updates, something that Tesla has had since day one. VW will have to cross a large chasm over the next three years and hire talent, something that is scarce, while at the same time, Tesla is now on their home turf, scooping up as much talent as possible. Tesla now hires over 100,000 people worldwide and will likely be adding about 20,000 in Germany for its new Gigafactory. Today, VW lacks much of the expertise in software, given that 90% of the code that goes into their vehicle isn't even written by Volkswagen itself, it's outsourced. They are focused on insourcing lines of code written, which isn't necessarily the best measure of success either. Fewer lines of code may be better, easier to debug. Elon Musk has commented on lines of code before for the FSD platform, which he wants to actually decrease. There can't be bugs in lines of code that don't exist. Now surprisingly, CNBC states that Tesla has been struggling with scaling whereas scale is undoubtedly on Volkswagen's side. Mass manufacturing is something that VW knows a thing or two about. This appears to be the opposite of what's actually happening today, and perhaps they are referencing Tesla's struggle to bring up the original Model 3 production line years ago as they tried to automate everything before it was even ready. Today, Tesla has achieved an extremely high level of automation, and according to VW itself, Tesla is able to make cars three times faster. Volkswagen is good at manufacturing gas cars, but now they face the gigantic undertaking of converting all their plants to produce electric vehicle parts all around the world. CNBC views VW's manufacturing plants as an advantage since they simply need to be converted to electric. However, we saw with Tesla that converting an empty Toyota slash GM plant to electric 
was far less efficient than building a new optimized one from scratch. They also need to strike a fine balance between gradually phasing out their own ICE vehicles in favor of electric. And at the same time, dealerships don't want to sell something that breaks less, doesn't need oil changes or fewer brake changes, no transmission fluid changes, pretty much everything that they make money on. Electric cars are hugely unprofitable for dealerships, which will be a major challenge long term for how VW sells its vehicles. Now while Volkswagen has been partnering with others to build out charging stations in Europe, Tesla is planning to open up its supercharger stations to non-Tesla EVs, which appears to be viewed as a positive for VW since their cars will have access to Tesla's much larger network. But Tesla will be charging higher fees to non-Tesla EVs and will likely add a subscription plan for the service to keep people charging at superchargers. This could backfire long term for Volkswagen as it may draw people away from their own charging stations in favor of Tesla's, thus reducing cash resources to pay for the chargers and potentially slowing down VW station buildout. There's no sense investing even more into a network that's infrequently used. This could widen Tesla's moat, shifting more income in their favor, not to mention that users would need to use the Tesla app, bringing more visibility to Tesla's products and free advertising for the company. In the end, CNBC effectively makes the contradictory case that Tesla is in fact the market leader. They outline many issues at Volkswagen and even say that VW will definitely cut into Tesla's market share in the future, which implies that Tesla is somehow leading in market share, which isn't the case yet, but will likely be once Giga Berlin ramps up. One of the biggest challenges not mentioned is the culture of the company. Tesla is moving at a rapid pace, making tens of changes each week in vehicle improvements and building out infrastructure as fast as possible. Herbert Dees has a big challenge ahead as he tries to convince executives at the company to move away from their old ways. Many employees are likely quite comfortable with their current jobs at VW and don't see the need to move quickly as many will retire in a few years. Tesla is pushing for innovation and speed, and so there is always this comparison that VW will catch up to where Tesla is today, but by the time that happens, Tesla will have moved much further ahead, keeping Volkswagen out of reach. Elon Musk has stated in the past that second place should need a telescope to see Tesla. So do you think Volkswagen will be able to hit or surpass its own EV targets and reinvigorate the 84-year-old automaker? Or will Tesla cut into VW's ICE sales faster than Volkswagen can transition its business to battery electric vehicles? Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.